In this video, we're going to be learning how to use initial rate methods to figure out the order of the reactions uh, with respect to different reactants and how to write the rate law at the end of the day. Now, suppose I have this reaction where I got NO reacting with NO2 plus O2, and at the end of the day, it's going to make your N2. O5. And uh, I do have only one coefficient. This reaction seems to be already balanced. I got one coefficient for each reactant and one coefficient for the product. So when I'm writing the rate law for this particular reaction, I'm going to have some rate constant K, the concentration of NO to some power X, and then the concentration of NO2 to some power Y, and the concentration of O2 to some power Z, let's say. Now, my job is to figure out what those X, Y, Z going to be so that you can figure out the overall rate of the reactions. Now, keep in mind this X, Y, Z are not going to be coming from your coefficient. They must be determined experimentally because there are going to be times when you know, the concentration of one of these reactants are, is not really going to be a factor in terms of determining uh, the in terms of controlling the rate of the reaction so that's why you must use either initial rate methods or you must have the mechanism of the reaction to figure out what the order is going to be for those particular reactants and hence you can get the overall order of the reaction now here we're going to be focusing on how we're going to be using the initial rate methods to figure out the x y and z so let's look at this table here where you have found the experimental initial rates when you were changing the concentrations of these three different reactants. Now, the way you're going to be picking up your experiments or your trials is you want to make sure you pick so that the concentration of only one reactant is changing, but the concentration of other two reactants is staying the same. What that means, if I focus on, uh, suppose, trial 1 and trial 2, I can see in trial 1, the concentration of NO is 0.2, the concentration of NO in trial 2 is 0.4. So that one is changing, but when I'm looking at um, the other concentrations, the NO2 and the O2, these two concentrations are really not changing. So that's a good trial to pick to figure out how does the change in the concentration of NO changes the initial rate there. So that's what we're going to be trying to figure out there. So what I can do, I can divide these concentrations uh, so always try to write the higher concentration on the top and the lower concentration on the bottom. So you can do uh, trial 2 divided by trial 1. And you can do the other way. You can do trial 1 over trial 2. But the reason I did trial 2 because you have a higher concentration for the NO. It just makes the life easier when you're doing the calculation. So 0 0.40 divided by 0 0.20. And then remember what was the superscript or what was the power for the NO? If I go back there, the power in case of NO was X. So you want to make sure you go ahead and write that down here. So that's going to be X. And you ignore the other guys. You ignore the NO2 and the O2 because they have the same concentration. So don't even write the, bother writing those out. And that's going to be equal to whatever your rate's going to be. So your rates for the trial 2 is 0 0.024. And the rate for the trial 1 is going to be 0 0.012. Now you do your math here. So when you do your math here, 0.4 divided by 0 0.02, it's going to be 2 to the power x. And that's going to be 0 0.024 divided by 0 0.012 is also going to be 2. So what would be the value of x here? Well, it's got to be 1 in that particular case. So what that really means is your reaction is going to be first order with respect to the x. So your x, I'll write that down on the side here. So your x came out to be 1 so far. Now, just like how we found the x, we got to figure out the y and the z. So now you got to pick two experiments where the x 
uh, where the NO is not changing, but maybe the, the NO2 is changing and the O2 is not also changing. So let's focus on some other trials here. If I, let me change the color there. So if I look at maybe trial one and four, so what's happening in one and four? So we can clearly see at one and four, the concentration of NO is not changing. The concentration of NO2 is not changing either. However, the concentration of O2 is changing. So that means we can use trial one and four to figure out what's gonna be the order of the reaction with respect to O2. So I'll do something very similar. So I'll do trial four divided by trial one. And I know for trial four, the O2 concentration is 0.4. And remember, you don't really wanna bother writing the, the concentrations for NO and the NO2 because they're just the same and they will just cancel out. Divided by the concentration of O2 at trial one is 0 0.20. And what's gonna be the power in this particular case? Well, if you go back here, you have assumed that particular power to be Z there. So that's gonna be Z. And what are the initial rates? Well, it seems like your initial rates are the same here when you're going from trial one to trial four. So 0 0.012 and 0 0.012 for both of those trials. And uh, logically, think about this. When you're changing the concentration of O2, your initial rate doesn't really change. Uh, what does that mean? That means uh, the rate of the reaction is actually going to be independent of the change in the concentration of the O2. And I can, I can go ahead and do the math as well, but think about logical as well. Um, I got 2 to the power of Z, and that's going to be equal to 1. So when you have something to a power, and that's going to be equal to 1, well, using... If you have a Z to be zero, that's when this whole value is gonna be one. So that means your Z comes out to be zero in this particular case. Similarly, I gotta figure out what's gonna be the order of the reaction with respect to NO2. And now we gotta find a, another trial, two other trials where the NO is not changing, the O2 is not changing, but your NO2 is going to be changing. So which one would you pick in that case? Okay, sometimes you may not get into a situation where you can have the NO2 changing but the other two staying the same. And that's what we're really getting into in this particular case because I don't really see any two trials where only the NO2 is changing while keeping other guys to be the same. And in, in that particular case, you can, just, you can just pick any two trials where I can pick maybe two and three, and the reason I'll tell you why I'll pick two and three. In two and three, the NO is staying the same, so that NO, we don't really have to write it. The O2 is indeed changing here, so the O2 going from 0 0.20 to 0 0.40, but we already know what happens to the order of the reaction or what happens to the rate of the reaction with respect to the change in the O2. Or another way of saying, we already know the order of the reaction with respect to O2 is actually zero. So changing the concentration of O2 is not gonna be changing any of those um, initial rates there. So we don't really have to worry about the change in the concentration of O2 there. So sometimes that does happen. So if you already know the order of a order of the reaction with respect to a particular reactant, you can use that in a different trials. Okay, so let's say if I use two and three, so I'll do experiment, or not experiment, rather the trial three divided by trial two. And the concentration of NO2 is gonna be 0 0.6 for three, and it's gonna be 0 0.2 for the trial two. And what's gonna be the power in this case? If I go back with the power for the NO2 is Y. So I'll go ahead and write that to Y there. And then what's gonna be your initial rates there? The initial rate for the third trial is gonna be 0 0.072. And the initial rate for the second trial is 0 0.024. So you wanna go ahead and write those down here. 
0.072 and 0.024. Well, all you really got to do is do the math here now. So it's going to be 3 to the power y, and that's also going to be 3. So if your bases are the same, your powers must be the same here. So that means y got to be equal to 1 here. So now we also know what's going to be the value for the y. That's going to be 1. When I go back and I want to go ahead and write down the rate of this reaction, um, it's going to be rate equals K, and then the NO is going to have um, the X value is 1, so you don't really have to write that. If you don't write anything, that just automatically means it's 1 there. The NO2 is also going to be 1, so that's going to be your rate law expression, and since the O2 is 0, you don't really want to write the O2. The other thing you want to make sure you can figure out is the value of k. To figure out the value of k, I can rearrange all these things, and I can write that down as rate divided by the concentration of NO times the concentration of NO2. And I can pick any one of these trials to figure out the k. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. If you pick any one of those, your value is going to be the same. So the, if I suppose get the first trial here, the rate for the first trial is 0 0.012, and then that's going to be molar over second, and the rate for, well, the concentration for NO is going to be 0.2 molar. you got to be careful with the units here, and uh, the NO2 is also 0 0.20 molar. And when you do this math, so that comes out to be 0.3, and uh, be careful with the units there. One of these uh, molarities will cancel out, but the other one will still stay there. So that's going to be molarity inverse and second inverse to be the units for that particular k value. So when I'm writing this at the end of the day, your rate is going to be equal to 0.3 molarity inverse, second inverse, and then I know the NO is uh, first power, and then I also know NO2 is going to be the first power as well. So that's going to be your final answer in this particular case. That's how you're going to be using the initial rate methods to find the rate law expression, find the orders of the reaction with respect to each reactant, and eventually finding the value of the rate constants, including the units. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.